So, have a beautiful texture that you try to scale. Yeah. And so you try it with a tileable texture, right? Right. What? What the fuck? In this video, I will show you a really clever trick that lets you scale down any textures, even the untiled one, without any of the scale pattern glitches. It's really easy, and it's done with only two simple steps. Well, let's go. So let's see together what's the tile texture and why it doesn't make the problem disappear, okay? So I'm in render here, I will just so create let's see together shift a mesh plane, right? And I will just scale it, right? With S on my keyboard. That being done, I will just create a new era, e -ira. <laughs> a new area, right? And I will just make it into the shader editor right i will create a new shader and i will remove the principal shader create an image texture right shift s and image texture and here i will just open right and i will go in uh, my tiling texture so this is a tile texture where is it where is it where is it so let's see it all right here the color in the output surface and i have just here the texture all right so how do i know it's Tiled, it's because I see that this pixel is the same as this pixel, right? So it's why it's tiled. And you will see when we scale it and when it's repeat, uh, you won't see seams between the two textures because each pixel is all the same. So we can check that really quick. You can just put a texture coordinate node, right? And you can just put a mapping node, okay? So once again, to add node like this, Shift A and you just press search here okay so uv in the vector and mapping here and so i will just change the scale and you see that when i scale my texture you don't see seams between the texture right you don't see lines but what you do see is the repetition pattern right you do see that the texture repeats itself even if it's tiled so it's why tile texture is not enough and often it's just not the solution you want because you can do whatever you want, you won't be able to get rid of this repetition pattern. So what can you do? Well, I will show you two things that you can use, really useful and really simple, to break that repetition pattern and to have any texture, even if they are untiled, to be able to be scaled on any surfaces, right? At any scale, any size, without the repetition pattern, right? Okay, let's go. So the first one is a little trick to use to only just take the repetition pattern and make it random in rotating, scaling, and line. I will explain you and I will show you what I mean by that. Right now, our repeat pattern, it just, it, this is just square, right? But what we can do is we can, we can use some texture trick to create not square, but random uh, surfaces, right? I'll show you this. So to do this, you need to create what we call a Voronoi texture, right? You take a Voronoi texture and you just put here the output of the mapping in the Voronoi texture, right? What you do now is you can show the Voronoi texture. What we what will be really interesting to us is the position here, right? So I will just put the scale to one for now and you see that we have like some area and this will be the area of our new of our new texture so how we can use that so this is a, there is a little trick because if you just do this here it will be like really messed up you know you see that it doesn't work and it's because you can't just put the voronoid with the original coordinate you need to take the voronoid and subtract the original coordinate before plugging into the texture all right it's because if you do not do that here you have like a double coordinate you have the uv coordinate here and the Voronoi texture coordinate so it doesn't make any sense you need to subtract the uv coordinate and just keep the position of the Voronoi, right so to do it you to do that sorry you just you can just create a node called mat vector map sorry and 
we have we are very lucky because we can just have the subtract here uh, calculation right and you just put this here right really easy stuff my bad this is uh, Swift no, sorry so this is a UV when we and we subtract the round at on the UV right and what we have now we have this right so now we have this in the output of subtract and we have this and so you already see that our texture appear at each of the zone of the Verona and you can scale the Verona to see it all right so this is cool but the problem you have with this is that naturally the texture will be way too big for the zone so you will just see like a, a small element a small part of the texture on the Voronoi cell, right? So to do this, to correct this, you can just create another void tomat node, pressing Shift D, and you have a calculation called scale, and you can just make scale bigger, and so you will have like textures that are bigger. Do not, if it's too big, you will see the pattern of repetition again. So be careful with this. So this should be alright. And what you can do, what I like to do, is just to put the same value here and here. It's not that much of a big deal you you can not do that if you want but this is something I, I love to do so i just put scale to one here and i will just create a value node and i will just put one here too and i will just put this here and here and so now with only one value i can scale all of this and you see you already see that it's way better than the tiling we had before but this is still not it because right now we still see some repetition pattern here 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 you see and this is because all of the texture have the same rotation within the cell okay so what we, what we need to do is to create a random rotation within each cell of the Voronoi and this is actually pretty easy because we have a node that co that is called vector rotate so you just put it before the scale and after the subtract right and you see that if i move the angle okay all is rotating like i want so this is pretty awesome but of course all is rotating at the same pace right so this is not exactly what i want what would be perfect it's a value different for each cell here oh my god this is what we have got, right? The color is a value, a different value for each of the cell, right? This is that much easy, okay? So what is really cool is that the color is a vector and here it's just a value. So if you, we plug the color in the value directly, Blender will automatically convert our color to a value. So perfect, right? So now you can see the difference here, right? Before, after way better but we can't we can still see some repetition pattern and it's because the color are value between 0 and 1 but the rotation angle of value between 0 and 2 times pi all right so don't be tricked by this but because uh, under the hood this is not degrees this is a radiant right and radiant is uh, pi is uh, 100, 150 180 degrees and two pi is uh, 360 right so what we're going to do here it just multiplies this value to have like more more power on each rotation you will see it's really simple so you just create a mat node multiply and here, if I multiply by zero, I have no rotation, right? But if I multiply it by a large number, you see that I have a rotation that is awesome and really, really, really different for each cell, right? And so now the repetition pattern is really, really hard to get, right? So this is really cool because we are uh, just passing from a bad tiled texture to this but this is not all because you see that we can we can still see a little bit uh, some of the cut in the texture and some of the stuff that is not really really realistic the the other advice i have for you the other trick i have for you today is really really cool the trick is not to use only one texture but two or more so how do you do that it's really really simple what we're going to do we are going to duplicate all of this node hierarchy right okay and now I'll just change the texture here, okay? So I have another texture that is really, really simple. It, it is just some sand, all right? So I, will, I want to have dirt, right? Not sand. So what I'm going to do, I will just create a U saturation value node, right? And I will just put down the value, right? And 
push the saturation to have some dirt, right? And so what we're going to do, we are going to mix this one and this one to have something that is more variant and more realistic because in the real world, the grass is not the same color everywhere, right? There is not the same density of dirt, of grass, of whatever you want. So you need to have some variation on the texture, especially when we represent a really, really big area. So when we need really, really small texture in scale. This is often why we use styling, by the way. So what we are going to do, we are going to create a noise texture that will make this able to us, right? So noise texture here. And I will just, in the noise texture, create just after, sorry, a map range. So the map range is a node that is specific for contrasting a value. So let me explain. If you put this value more next to one, right? So from min. From min, if you put more next to one, you will have more black. If you put the from max more next to zero, you will have more white. And the more these two values are next to each other, the more contrast you have, and you see that we don't even get, because the same value, the uh, gradient between the two now, okay? So we can have this and have some roughness, right? So maybe some distortion and some detail in it, right? And I will keep a little bit of the uh, of the contrast here, uh, of the gradient here, okay? So how we can we use this? What's the, what's the trick with this, okay? So what we're going to do, it's like I said, mix this texture and this texture, right? This and this. So to mix this, it's really simple. You just create a node that's called mix. Awesome, right? <laughs> so you just could mix. We, you, we mix. We are mixing two colors, right? So we just take color and you put the first one in the A and the second one in B. And now you see that if the factor is at zero, we see the first one. And if the factor is at one, we see the second one. Okay, so really cool. But what we want to do for us is to see the first one at certain areas and the second one at certain areas. To do this, you can use your noise texture because what is going to happen is if you plug this here, the black area will show the first texture and the white area will show the second texture. Let's see. You will see what I mean? You have some dirt and some grass and you can still play with it right mod mod more dirt more grass and you can even if you want make it a little bit more contrast all right L your call you do you are you are doing whatever you want right and so doing this you will create some texture and you can e you can of course of course you can do it if you want with more textures than two and with these tricks you can you have like textures that are uh, you, you can scale them infinitely on a terrain that is infinitely big and you will not have the tiling problem, okay? So this is really cool and this is, to be fair, pretty easy to do. The only hard part is this and to be fair, it's five nodes. So, all right, okay? And you can just take pause on the video and just you, you copy past them, all right? If you are not like uh, really autonomous in the shader editor, right? All right. First of all, congrats for reaching this point. Trust me, you're part of the minority. Now, would you like to go further than a simple tutorial? Having a real course that explains you the basics that are behind a video like this one. Yeah? Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna click on the first link in the description to receive an entire six-day course where I explain you how you can create your first movie entirely in Blender. We realize together this epic gladiator fight between the evil cube and the dark pyramid. And all of this for free. Yeah, you heard me well. This is totally free. There is no bullshit. And you will be able to apply all the skills you learn in your personal projects. So, let's see you there.